All right, our first section in chapter three is properties of parallel lines. So we're gonna start off with uh, some definitions. A transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines at two distinct points. So referring to our diagram on the right, line L would be our transversal. Alternate interior angles are on the inside of the two coplanar lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So again, referring to our diagram, that would be angle three and angle six, so there's one pair, and then angle four and angle five. Alternate exterior angles are on the outside of the two coplanar lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So here, that would be angle one and angle eight, and another pair would be angle two and angle seven. Same side interior angles are on the inside of the two coplanar lines and on the same side of the transversal. So again, we have two pairs, angle three and angle five, and angle four and angle six. And finally, corresponding angles have the same position on each of the coplanar lines. So that would be angle one and angle five. They're both in the top left in their group. Angle three and angle seven. Oops. Angle two and angle six. And finally, angle four and angle eight. All right, now a few postulates and theorems to go with our types of angles. Corresponding angles postulate says if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. So those pairs of corresponding angles we named would be congruent to one another. So angle one would be congruent to angle five in this diagram on the right. You know, and angle three would be congruent to angle seven, and so on. Alternate interior angles theorem says if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle three would be congruent to angle six, and angle four is congruent to angle five. Alternate exterior angles theorem, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle eight, and angle two is congruent to angle seven. And finally, same side interior angles theorem says if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then same side interior angles are supplementary. So that means angle three plus angle five equals 180, and also angle four plus angle six equals 180. All right, on the figure to our right, we are going to find the measures of missing angles. And first, it'll probably be helpful if we just label our diagram and then we'll fill in the letters. All right, so we're given one angle right here is 123 degrees. Well, from some of our theorems we just looked at, I know angle five would be 123 degrees because they're alternate interior angles. I know that angle one would be 123 degrees because it's a corresponding angle with angle five and it's also a vertical angle with the angle we were given. I also know angle eight would be 123 degrees. Again, it's an alternate exterior angle with angle one and it's vertical to angle five. Now to get our other missing angle, um, angle three and angle five will add up to 180, they're supplementary. So that means that angle three has to be 57 degrees if angle five is 123. So if angle three is 57, that makes angle six 57, because they're alternate interior, makes angle two 57, because that's corresponding with angle six, and it makes angle seven 57 degrees because it's alternate exterior with angle two. 
Now if I want to fill the right side in, well angle 1 and angle 9 are corresponding. So angle 9 would be 123. Angle 2 and angle 10 are corresponding, so angle 10 would be 57. And then we can fill in all our other missing angles. Uh, like angle 12 would be 123, 14 would be 123, 13 would be 57, and 11 would be 123. So then we can go on the right and fill in our missing spot, the missing angles. All right, now we got those all labeled. Okay, now we're going to apply our properties of parallel lines to our two examples here. So in our first one, um, we have two parallel lines. We have a transversal line here, if I extend it. And we also have a transversal line here that we can extend. Well, first, um, A is going to be 65 degrees because it is an alternate interior angle with the 65 we were given. To find our angle B, well if you notice A, B, and the 40 degrees are all on the same line, so that means they have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I take 180 minus A, which is 65, and then minus that 40 degrees, we get 75 degrees, and that's because they are supplementary. And finally, C is 40 degrees because it is an alternate interior angle with that 40 we were given. All right, number two, we want to find the values of X and Y. So again, we have two parallel lines cut by transversal. If you were to extend these, you would see that we have transversal lines here, and our parallel lines keep going too, just to kind of give you a visual of what we're looking at here. All right, so to find angle X, well, we see that X and this 90 degrees are on the same line, so that means they're supplementary. So I can take 2X plus 90, equals 180. Subtract 90, so 2x equals 90, or x is 45. Then to get y, again, y and y minus 50 are on the same line, so that means that they are supplementary. So we can take y plus that y minus 50 equals 180. Combine like terms, get y by itself, and we get that y is 115. All right, and last thing for this lesson, we have some properties of congruence and equality to get down. Um, the reflexive property of congruence says a is congruent to a, so the reflexive property of equality says a is equal to a. Symmetric property of congruence, if a is congruent to b, then B is congruent to A. So then the symmetric property of equality, if A equals B, then B equals A. So notice in those two we can reverse the order. Transitive property of congruence, if A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C, then A is congruent to C. It's kind of like a substitution there. So the transitive property of equality, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C.